A new year doesn't always have to mean a new man, but a good New Year's resolution for the man in your life should be better hygiene. Get him the best electric trimmer and men's grooming with Manscaped's Lawn Mower 4.0. The Lawn Mower 4.0 is here to take down every pube in his path with their advanced skin safe technology. Talk about a movement I can get behind. Manscaped has also developed the Complete Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package 4.0, or as I like to call it, the perfect package for his perfect package. How about if your man has a wild, and not our kind of wild, but wild nose and ear hairs? Manscaped has you covered. Their Weed Whacker will change the game for whacking the worst weed. Get 20% off and free shipping with code ROCKY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use code ROCKY. The new year is here. Upgrade your man with Manscaped. And happy new year to his balls. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. Is a Prince lyric and a perfect way to kick off this week's episode because I married my friends on Thursday, Isabel and Will. And it was an epic day, to be quite honest, from start to finish. At the beginning, celebrating with the bride and the bridesmaids is always one of the highlights of a wedding day for me. The dancing, the champagne, the getting ready, I'm obsessed. The wedding was happening on Brighton Beach, and our Uber driver let us blast Motown and sing it all the way there. Five stars. And I don't mean to talk about the weather, but it was a nice day for a beach wedding. On a December day in New York, no less. It somehow worked out that we had this built-in altar on the beach. Go the fuck off, Brighton. And the whole thing lasted an hour tops. I will absolutely never forget marrying them. You never forget your first. Afterwards, of course, it was time to get loose as a motherfucking goose. 100% party mode. Isabel and Will rented us a room at some karaoke bar in Park Slope, which I just have to say, if you're a hater about karaoke, you simply haven't gone with the right people, or frankly, you're not the right people. You get to drink and scream in a semi-soundproof room, and your inhibitions just go out the window. The whole thing is great. You basically get to act like an animal. It's a red flag to me if you're not into karaoke, frankly. The karaoke bar was trying to be a little bit of a buzzkill, however. I will give them that. Apparently, it was this girl's first day. And after our experience with her, I was like, on earth? You know who the easiest people to take care of in a restaurant setting are? Servers and bartenders. That was us. And another group who's really easy to wait on are nuns, but that's a story for a different day. We were really dressed to the nines, had a credit card down, and ready to rage on a Thursday at 4 p.m. And she was acting like we were going to run, sing and swing, tune and dash. After everything we ordered, she'd ask us, are you sure you want to order that? It costs this much. Yeah, we know. Would you please just punch in the $11 chicken fingers? She told Isabel she had to order all her alcohol at once, so Isabel orders her new husband, former Lowe's, all got delivered at the exact same time, and that's when the foolery had to stop. That is the moment we had to figure out what was going on in this weird-ass karaoke bar. From then on, this other guy took over for her. I think between us going in and out trying to solve the problem and the fact that we were the only group of customers ready to drop guap on a random afternoon might have caused his intervention. He made the flow much smoother. I learned a lot about myself at karaoke. For example, I shouldn't be out of breath after living La Vida Loca, or should I be? Bono making the choice to go uno, dos, tres, catorce was not only bold, I think it was fun. And I love the song Waterloo. I've been missing out on that song for years. I mean, I knew it existed, but I didn't know how much I liked it. Isabel and Will, congratulations. Thank you for letting me be part of your day in such a special way. I meant every word I said to you that sunny day on Brighton Beach, and I'll never forget December 8th. And uh, you, like, really nailed getting married. The rest of you listening out there, I, too, can marry you.
Welcome to the Rocky Rundown, where you get to learn a little bit about my week. Party God Squad, hello. Did you have a good week? I sure hope so. I hope your holidays are ramping up in a way where it seems absolutely insane, but the good kind of insane. The kind of insane that'll have you partying for three days in a row just by a scheduling coincidence. It kind of feels kismet to me to be having the season two finale of Wild Nights the day after that season two finale of White Lotus. Oh my god. But here we are. Since Thursday night, I have felt like Lady Gaga. Every night, no sleep. Bus, club, another club, another club, plane, next place. No sleep, no fear, nobody believed in me. In preparation for December's Rage Fest, I was getting my nails done. And the nail tech actually stopped, looked at me, and said, relax. And this caught me off guard because I thought I was relaxed. I'm at a nail salon listening to Dua Lipa right now. I'm the poster child for relaxation. But in reality, I probably haven't taken a real deep breath in years. I'm tense. My shoulders were up to my ears. My mind's racing. My hand is fully locked. I was somewhere else. And her saying relax so peacefully saved not only the day, but the entire weekend. I had a marathon ahead of me, but I trained my entire adult life for a party stretch like this. The best thing I could do was relax. You already know about the nuptials and the antics that went down there, so we'll move right on to Friday night, the double birthday party. I've mentioned many times, my girlfriends Katie and Kara do a joint party every year, and this year the theme was disco. Apartment full of people, everybody ready to dance. One of them turned 33, and while we're standing around talking, my friend Ryan says, you ever think you'd be standing here dying to be 33 again? And we all laughed so hard because, well, there's truth in comedy. And we were longing to be 33 again. And time goes by so fast, but one day we'll say that about being 43 and 53 and 63. So just enjoy the construct of age. And rather than looking at it like this sucks, we can look at age like chapters in the story of our lives. Sometimes the 33 chapter is better than the 29 chapter. And maybe the 38 chapter is boring because it has to be so that 39 can be exciting. We were going to a disco dance party at a bar called Shemansky's. Thing about me is I'm making my rounds at the club. By the end of the night, coat check's gonna know me. The bouncers are gonna know me. The security at the club next door are gonna know me. I'm not rich and famous enough to have a security team yet, so I have to go make one wherever I go. You feel me? I'm up in this bitch like I'm running for president, goddammit. Shaking hands, kissing babies. How's the family? What's the plan for the holidays? You still having trouble sleeping? And the love I give is given right back. These men are no energy vampires, so I need to give a special shout out to Eddie, Klaus, and Ray, and the whole bouncer team at Shemansky's. We disco danced the night away, and the last two standing were me and Katie. My girl. We said, let's go get a nightcap. We sit down at a bar, the crack. We order a couple beers and matching bell bottoms, and we're approached by two friends, a guy and a girl. The girl's talking to Katie, and the guy's talking to me. Would Katie and I rather have been recapping the night and confabbing together without interruption? You bet your tight-ass disco bell bottoms we would have. But we were gifted and cursed with magnetism. The strangers, they flock. To uphold our civic duty, we usually oblige for the story. The woman is talking to Katie. The man is talking to me. And I'm a little tipsy, but I'm with it. Same with Katie. Then while we're separately talking to them, my man spills red wine all over me. It was so much red wine and it happened so fast, you would have thought he chucked it at me real housewife style. He didn't. It was an accident, but he drenched me. I kept it together though. I get that from my dad. One day we were at a Waffle House in Maryland and the waiter accidentally spilled drinks all over him. And he was dressed really sharp too. And when I tell you he stayed so composed, cool, calm, collected, that's HP though. I had the same approach. This guy was so apologetic. Look man, I'm not mad. I'm just soaking wet, you know? I was a little mad. 
If a man is going to get me that soaking wet, I should at least be being railed by him. I was in a pure white crop top. I looked like a sexy-ass grown woman Bratz doll come to life. This is not the male attention I wanted to be entertaining. The bartenders were helpful, but now I gotta act extra with it. Poised. I can't have them thinking I had anything to do with this debacle. I'm rubbing the wine out my titties. The shit's gotten inside my pants all the way down to my socks. The entire left side of me is soaked and my shirt is ruined. All the while, my new pal is apologizing profusely. Then he apple paid me 50 bucks. Do you know that Mr. Spills actually asked the bartender for another glass of wine while I was standing there dabbing myself? The bartender refused, obviously. But that kind of audacity I can really appreciate. At 6 a.m., Mr. Spills texted me, I'm sorry about your short, but I knew what he meant. I'm not mad at him. The next day, Natalie, with every drop of her magic Sicilian blood and the power of OxyClean, she got all the wine out of my clothes. And luckily, my insanely killer outfit lives to fight another day. I appreciate the new story in my repertoire. Mr. Spills, if you're listening, Apple pay me another $50 and I'll go Instagram live with you. We can tell the story together. Best of luck out there. And the next time a man gets me that soaking wet at a bar, I better be pregnant at the end of the exchange. Saturday night was Wizabelle, their celebrity couple names, wedding reception at a bar in Brooklyn. And of course it was beyond fun. But when we got to the bar, we didn't know exactly where it was happening inside. Naturally, we asked the bartenders. And let me tell you something about these Gen Z bartenders, okay? They have no fucks to give whatsoever. I don't know if it's rude or if it's keeping it 100% real. I don't know if I love it or I hate it. I think as someone who spent her 20s slinging burgers to tourists from around the country and world with a smile on my face and disgust for them all inside, I think I'm jealous of their laissez-faire approach to customer service. Gen Z has no fear of repercussion when it comes to how they speak. It's almost groundbreaking and revolutionary. And frankly, I'm jealous. I avoided anyone who was drinking a drink that wasn't clear, and I hung out with some of the funniest friends I know. Throw parties. Throw get-togethers. If you were invited in the first place, you're probably a goddamn joy to be around. So we should all just do it often, especially when it's open bar. Thank you, Whizabelle. I didn't take enough pictures. I lived in the moment the whole time, and I made a couple new pals along the trail, baby. That's what it's about. The weekend went off without a hitch. Well, actually, that sentence doesn't apply here because two people did hitch. I hitched them, but it went off with a bang. Bangs, even. Not enough bangs, some people would argue. Shout out to Christine and Phil for our 2.30 a.m. diner stint and everyone I shared this marathon weekend with. It was indeed a small price to pay to the party gods. I can't believe that this is the finale of season two of Wild Nights. There have been so many wonderful accomplishments, introductions, and moments that happened this year. Thank you to every last guest. Thank you to every last retweet, like, and share. Thank you to every stream and view. Thank you to Manscaped and everyone who has bought and will continue to buy Manscaped products with promo code ROCKY, 20% off. It's the holiday season, and if you want to know what I want for Christmas, it's for you to share Wild Nights with one person you know that will vibe with us. And a little wisdom from a babe who gets around town. Celebrate your life in a way that makes you happy. Don't compare yourself. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. And water your figurative garden. Reach out if you miss someone. Remember, emojis aren't communication. And lastly, stay hydrated. That brings us to Rocky's Highest Thoughts, my most stoned thoughts of the week. Number one, I was in a bathroom reading the Heimlich Maneuver sign, and I just think we can come up with a better word than choking victim. What if we just said choker? Number two, windows need get-out-of-bed filters because I can't fathom moving when it's gray in the morning. Number three, isn't it funny that you have your alarm and then you have your real alarm? And number four, unless you're having the phase, let me go back. Stop calling the phase a hoe phase, by the way. That's patriarchal rhetoric to make women believe that if she enjoys getting dicked down by various men in a period of time, she's a hoe. Men can't even avoid multiple women's DMs at the same time, honey. You are not the hoe. As I was saying, unless you're going through the phase where you need to straddle yourself from one penis to another to get you to the next chapter in life, 
then you shouldn't be entertaining fuckboys. Don't entertain fuckboys. Fuckboys are a vessel for singular pleasure or non-committal rosters. Do not catch feelings, do not plan futures, and do not feed the fuckboys. My guest this week is comedian Sunny Outlaw. Sunny is a stand-up, an improviser, a storyteller, and a genuinely pure-hearted, charismatic man. If you don't know him, you're gonna love him. And if you do know him, you already love him. His wild word was speechless, but I hope Sonny is never speechless because he has too many wonderful things to say. If you haven't done so already, please like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. You can follow me at Wild Nights with Rocky on TikTok and Instagram, at Wild Nights Pod on Twitter. If you want to watch extended interviews with all of my guests, please subscribe on YouTube. If you want to support the show with your wallet, you can join my Patreon for two or five dollars a month. A big thank you and a future thank you to everyone who's written and everyone who will write a review on Apple Podcasts when this episode is over. It really does make a difference. It's been a great season too, everybody. Thank you so much for listening and supporting the show. I'll see you in 2023. And now, please enjoy my Wild Nights conversation with Sunny Outlaw. Sunny, welcome. Thank you for doing the podcast. I'm really excited. Thank you for having me. Oh my God, I'm really excited to have you. So we were talking a little bit before we hopped on here about how a lot of the time I will have guests that I'm like trying to meet or been interested in their comedy from afar, but you and I are in the same comedy community. The exact same one. (laughs) It is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And um, I have to say, I, I knew a little bit who you were before we got like formally introduced, but I wanted to tell the origin story of how I first um, essentially fell in love with Sunny because it was January 2020. And I, so I'd known you from around the pit community and I was my job, which I've talked about here on the show before. I worked at the best restaurant in New York City, if you want to be a degenerate who makes money and parties. Um, and <laughs> unfortunately, and fortunately, that restaurant closed down um, on New Year's Eve 2019 going into 2020. But I was lucky enough to get a job at another restaurant, which we can or cannot name. I don't know if you want to. So we don't have to. Um, and so I was filling out my paperwork as you do when you start a new job. And I was not feeling great about starting. I was feeling grateful for having a job, but not feeling great about starting a new restaurant job. Um, Especially once you've been in the restaurant industry for so long, you're like, oh my God, I got to start again somewhere where nobody knows me. Fortunately, I had gone to this new restaurant with two friends um, from my old job. And I knew one of the people working there already from that same job. And then I'm filling out my paperwork and I'm by myself. None of the other servers are talking to me. And you just point at me and you're like, hey, I know you. You're fit. You're really funny. Huh? And then you walked over to the group and you told the whole, all your friends from work, all the other servers, you're like, that girl's really cool. And then from that moment on, everybody was cool with me. Yo, that is hilarious. Yes. Uh, I want to tell you my side of it. Please. Because I saw you in the community and I would watch you on Super Free Wednesdays and I was like like the whole team, not just you. And, yeah. and like the, the improv was am- amazing. Yeah. And so when I saw you in that moment, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> that's her. <laughs> I was like, damn, because I had seen you around, but we just hadn't been like formally introduced. And I was like, man, the power that that guy has in this restaurant just shifted my whole, and all it takes is one person to vouch for you in in any field, not just working in restaurants. All it takes is one person to vouch for you. If that person's word is good, then everyone's like, oh yeah, Sunny vouches for her we're not gonna we're not gonna be mean to her we're not gonna give her any trouble so I really appreciate you doing that and it also shows like how power dynamics flip-flop in different places you know what I mean yeah absolutely because honestly I never even thought about it that way yeah and so I honestly this is my first time ever hearing that so that that's you're right I guess because I I am just such a cool person to be around you that are very if cool. I vouch for someone <laughs> <laughs> when I vouch for someone else's coolness people are like oh yeah yeah but I think I almost like set the stage for you too high because I was like yo she no, is no. funny as a hell no and no I, I definitely and, 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 I I hit the mark I hit the mark you don't have to worry about that you set it up I knocked it out it's no problem there <laughs> But I was very, I was very appreciative because um, it can be tough starting at a new restaurant. So I always remember that 
sunny. And I would say in that moment, you left me speechless. Oh, <laughs> see what I did there. So Sunny's wild word was speechless. So Sunny, I'm, I mean, you're just such an amazing storyteller. I am so excited to hear your wild night story. So give us your wild night story speechless. Okay. So I went to Bonnaroo in 2017. Nice. And I found myself. Amazing. It was awesome. Yeah. So much. I was like, I'm coming back to Bonnaroo in 2018. Okay. And we're going, uh, we're road tripping on the way there. And uh, I was bringing with me some, you know, some fun drugs. Yeah. Uh, to I'm a big fan of fun drugs. Experience. <laughs> yeah. Right. I had some mushrooms. I had some acid. And the funny, the funny, the acid uh to backstory on that a little bit yeah yeah it came from my friend lauren okay lauren, shout out to lauren shout out to uh lauren uh <laughs> yeah and uh she was like yo this guy used to make it for jerry garcia like this is the same dude and it was from like the this grateful dead yeah Yes, exactly. From the Grateful yeah. Dead. And it was like this octagonal looking thing. And, and and you would almost like think that it was like ecstasy or something else. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, it was what it was. And so I had like six or five of these with me, but I had already only taken it once and it was dope. Gotcha. Last, the year prior, we had snuck like all the, the blunts and, and stuff inside oh. of a speaker. Okay, that was very smart. So this year, come on, it worked once. We're experts now, right? Yeah. We're experts. Mm -hmm. So we put it inside of the speaker. All of it. The shrooms, the 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 weed, the acid, it's all in there, right? Yeah. We are road tripping from Indianapolis all the way to Tennessee. How many of you were were there? There was five of us total gotcha me my roommate who had never been to a music festival my one of my best friends uh who ha me and him had gone to bonnaroo together yeah someone my roommate was seeing at the time and a friend of the two bonnaroo experts our mutual friend so all it was five of us were road tripping from indianapolis uh down to like chattanooga tennessee ish area mm -hmm. now, bonnaroo is a music festival by the way. Oh yeah, no, we've had I've had a couple Bonnaroo stories on here, so I'm excited for this. Okay, great, great. Yes. And so, so we are we're driving, and the last thing that we talk about is let's let's smoke a let's smoke something, right? Yeah, yeah. And a roommate was just like, hey, look, it's gonna smell. Yeah. All right. We don't need to do it. We're like 15 minutes away. Don't draw attention. We can, yeah, we can do it inside, right? Come on, we ain't listening. Mm -mm. We're experts, right? Yeah, yeah. F it. So we, we, we do it, and then we're pulling into the security checkpoint. They, you're either lucky enough to go to the security checkpoint run by, by volunteers who don't give an F. Absolutely they don't not. care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have the random security checkpoint where like cops and stuff are looking through for, yeah. for items that don't need to be brought in. Really, the main things that they're kind of looking for are yes, they're looking for drugs, but they're looking for like big time like drug dealers that are like dealing ketamine exactly. and, and trying to like hurt festival goers and like people that are bringing glass bottles and stuff. Like Coke and stuff. They yeah. don't want. Yeah, they don't want people to fight each other and kill each other and make it violent. So it's, I get why they do it, and it should be done for random security checkpoints. Our car is 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 there, so we're we're getting yeah. checked through by the cops. There's like this one cop that's like in the head of everything, kind mm -hmm. of not the head of it, but the head of the search, and he is like trying to talk to us, like he's a good cop. Yeah, that's yeah, what his yeah. role was. Is like, hey quote, guys, unquote, come on, yeah. man, just tell me. I can smell it. I can yeah. smell it. 
And so we're like, we don't have anything. Just keep going, right? And so they rifle through everything. And, like, before they rifle through everything, we're just like, hey, look, we smoked a J on the way. Sorry. Yeah. Can they do He's that? Like, can nah. they go through all your stuff? They can, I guess, because they have to keep the festival safe. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if they really suspect it and they were like, we can smell the unsmoked weed. Yeah, we okay. We can smell it. It's not one you just smoke. Yeah, this is and fresh. And then my roommate had, like, cigarettes, and uh, they were, like, uh, Spliffs? With weed rolled in them. Yeah, yeah. Spl- yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. And then he was just like, hey, look, th- this is it. And he's like, no. So they take that. They're like, no. And then they just – and I'm not playing. When they write, they rifled through everything. And it's just – it just irritates me because it's like, man – the, the disrespect yeah like leaving a checkpoint with all your shit rifled through is like and like yo my one of us had birth control but not me like one of the girls on the yeah. trip had birth control pills I'm like what's this and she's like it's birth control and yeah he, you know he, it's a violation like they know yeah. you're not big time drug dealers you're just bringing in a little bit of fun and that yeah they violate you because they have the power would you look yeah, at that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, would you look at that? And wait till you it's so like while they're doing this, there's a cop next to me drinking a Heineken. Mm-hmm. In a glass, a glass, or not a glass, but like a bottled, a bottled Heineken because yeah. that's glass and you can't bring that into the festival. So they definitely confiscated it. And then took it. And the reason Yep. And so this dude's just drinking a Heineken, chilling next to me. He's like, This is your first Bonnaroo? I'm like no nah, man this is my second yeah so, yeah I, i've been going to bonnaroo since it opened done a lot of you know seen a lot of people come in and out man i've been doing this since it opened the other cops Douche. have gone through everything everything in our car yeah They're like we can't find anything and then the cop drinking the heineken smashes his he- like he drinks the heineken all yeah. the way throws it away he's like let me do this. <gasps> Motherfucker's got like a flashlight going under the car, like sniffing around, like just looking at everything. Oh my god! He picks, <laughs> he picks up the speaker. No. And this is my my Bonnaroo buddy, the one that had gone with me the year prior. This is his speaker, mm-hmm. right? And the cop goes, either. You guys open the speaker for me, or I'm gonna break it open myself. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, keep going. Oh my god! My, <laughs> my friend looks at him and he says, "Break it open." <gasps> And the cop is just like hesitant because you can tell he's never heard that before. He's like. Uh, are you sure this is a a nice speaker? I don't want to have to break it open if I don't have to. He's like, just break it open, man. Just do it. And yeah. so then the cop just starts smashing oh. it and smashing it on the on the ground. All of it comes out. Jesus. They take it, and then I'm like, hey guys, this is all my stuff. Yeah. And the cop. I was like, huh, I don't believe you. But the first one that was trying to be nice. And then the guy that was uh writing uh that that found the found it with the high he's the one that wrote up the citation and it and and this like it's just so funny how the law got passed. But like the governor that same year, like back in the day, Bonnaroo, you just get a citation and you pay a ticket. Yeah. And you were done. Would they confiscate the law, your drugs? Yes, and, but yeah. the law just got passed where now you had to come back for a court case no. in Tennessee. Oh, my God. I know. And it is really funny how many people came back. There was a, a group of us. I mean, hundreds. When we came back for the court case, just yeah. one by one by one. It's a really good economic move for them, but that is my wild story of how I got randomly security checkpointed at Bonnaroo. Now, you might be like, did I ever get to trip 
on that music festival? You bet your ass I did because some random person was like, hey, I know this is weird, but I have one strip of acid. Yeah. If, if you if you want it. On like day, it was the last day, so it was you know the killers were playing. Yeah, so I ended up. Yeah, I only got to do it that one day, but uh, that is my wild story. Wow, Sunny. Oh my God. Well, first of all, that's heartbreaking about the drugs. <laughs> Rest in peace to those drugs. I'm sure those cops enjoyed them very much. I was. I mean, I was speechless. Like when I tell yeah. these people the story, this the story of people later on. I mean, I didn't realize how good of a story it was until people's reactions but like the guy drinking a heineken like just he the knew cop, like i he, 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 takes I one to no one yeah i couldn't write better than this yeah yeah he knew i mean first of all i have a bunch of uh, things i want to add or ask about that story but i will say just it's so random how security guards how they're going to behave some are so cool and some aren't i was like I went to to Lizzo a couple months ago and I was dancing through the security line and I had a joint in my pocket. Um, and as I was like walking through to my friends who were on the other side, I was like singing and dancing through the um, metal detector. And my friend saw the joint fly out of my wallet or my jacket. And she told me, she's like, that security guard picked up your joint, but I have a good feeling about her energy. Like just ask her for it back. And I was like, listen, I think my joint fell out of my pocket. And she goes here, just be careful. Like, and I was like, Oh, my God, thank you. Thank you. And she gave it back. And she's like, don't make a big deal. Just be cool. And I was like, I am I'm sorry. But I was so happy to have the joint back. So um, you never know what you're going to get with security guards or how they're going to enforce their power to take your drugs. Um, I'm so glad that you got some acid. But did your friends get any or no? No, I mean, just I had mean, a drink. I, 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 I think, yeah, I mean, and, and you know, honestly, because it, it, it's funny, I, I normally say it this way, but it, I forgot to even say because I was just so in the adrenaline of telling the story. Yeah. But, like, they, they, they write me up, they take all of the, the stuff, and then they go, all right, have a good time at the festival, and they just let you in. Yeah. They just let you in, which is, like, great still. And, 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 and I will say, like, I learned a lot about, like, how to hide drugs. <laughs> yeah, sure. But like, also like, man, to come back from that, to still try to have like a good time. Mm -hmm. Like we're all in a, a funky mood because this just yeah. happened. It sets the we're, tone, makes the tone weird. And it's like, we're paying hundreds of dollars. We mm -hmm. just drove five hours. It still ended up being a good time. Yeah, good. That says a lot about the group that you were with, too, that they just didn't need to have drugs to have fun. But I'm a big proponent of mushrooms at concerts. I just think they, like, make you think so much. They expand your mind. It, it's amazing. So to have those confiscated, I would be pretty pretty butthurt about it for sure for sure well, yeah yeah and luckily you know i'm the one that really suffered the most out of it well like, that's I, what i was gonna ask did you you said you took ownership you said these are mine the other four people did not get a citation no and because truthfully i i wanted to break because like yeah they were under the impression we'll find it there but i i am a i'm a paranoid person okay and i would like i would just much rather know that this shit is uh clean yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If Especially if you're messing with like acid and stuff. I think mushrooms for the most part, you could get bad mushrooms, but for the most part, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to be like, for the most part, your mushrooms are good because do not take my word on that because I don't know where anyone's getting their mushrooms. So that's just my disclaimer, but I'm just saying in my personal experience, but uh, acid, yeah, I wouldn't mess with getting random acid from people that you've met at Bonnaroo. What, which is hilarious because that's what you did. I, I ended up doing it and it was literally the last day it was yeah. almost like a little gift from the universe where we just and I, I don't even know how it like ended up happening but like it just happens we, we were just like talking to this person had good vibes we were just vibing and then and then the person literally out of nowhere was just kind of like you know, I have this if yeah. any of you want it and then like the rest of the group around me were like looking at like it was like this moment where, like, the warrior gets his, like, sword or something. Yeah. And they're all looking at me, and they're like, you just made his weekend. Yeah. And, and then in classic Bonnaroo fashion, gotta go. It's gotta just, go. like, it's weird. Like, 
the the Bonnaroo connections that you make, like you know, you impact like each other's weekends that you'll remember forever, and then you just yes. disappear into the ether. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Have you, did you go back the next year? I have not been back since, and it's not because of any saltiness. It's just the way things have worked out. I yeah. went to Governor's Ball when I moved to New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. A, it's a bit of a trek from New York to go down to Tennessee to from here. Um, wow, Sunny, that really like you know a lot of the times I I, I go on the journey of the story while I'm hearing it for the first time. That's why I always like to not know the story ahead of time. But I really felt empathy for that story. I thank you, thank you so many. I I. I, really I, I, I tell it and I still don't know how I even feel about it because it is, it, 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 it is, it, it cost like it was literally the year before, like I had already planned to move to New York. Yeah. It was in the works. Yeah. I was saving up money. And then part of the money that I was saving up went toward this, this freaking Vacation. expungement and everything and, yeah. and getting to there and paying for the travels and this and all that. So it put a big dent on my plans. Yeah, of course. So I also I also learned another thing from this experience because yeah. it's like you will have every reason financially to not do something. Right. Uh and out of nowhere you will have a bill that 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 you did not plan for. This was never a part of the plans. Mm -hmm. And 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 I remember my roommate even because we both moved from Indianapolis to New York together. Yeah. He was like, so what? Like, this is this is it? I'm like, there's no way. Yeah, I'm not gonna let this affect the rest of my life. Yeah, I'm not gonna let just because because it was a decent amount of money. I was mm -hmm. like, I'll figure it out because I'm I'm a I'm I'm someone that lands on my feet generally. Yeah, yeah. And it was just it's just so I I, I learned a lot from the whole situation. Mm -hmm. that I apply to life but I'm also always like I really can't believe that this happened like yeah. even the Jerry Garcia weed or Jerry Garcia acid like I forgot that as that as actually a detail until I was retelling the story just now yeah 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 wow that's crazy Sunny and that's um I mean for me I would take away like okay what is the best place to hide my drugs if I was going to go into a place where I couldn't have yeah. that. That was an amazing story, Sunny. Um, you told it so well, and I'm so sorry that happened to you, but I obviously that's one of the hurdles of life that like makes you you and that you have to get over. And um, I do want to talk a little bit about you as a storyteller because you just put out a new special uh, that was filmed at the Pit Loft and I watched it on YouTube. It was great. And I just want to compliment you because I thought you had a lot of elements in your special that were, um, that you don't always see. You, you were it felt like in the beginning, a little beat poetry, like slam poetry. And it had a really melodic start to it. And when you were just kind of opening it up for everyone, you also interacted with yourself during the show, which is also a really unique thing. And then you played your father in it, right? You were his voiceover. And yeah, yeah, I was. You had a great balance of being really vulnerable and sharing parts that people might know. Because um, I will just tell everyone listening, if you know Sunny from around, you live up to your name. You're a very sunny personality. People, you're one of those people that behind closed doors, no one has a bad thing to say about you. And, you know, it's always good good things that people have to say. You, you really are like a sunshine in the community. So I thought you're special was a really nice slice of the things that hurt you and the things that make you sad and the things that are like your obstacles to overcome while talking about why you are this sunny person. Yeah, and thank you so much for saying all that. That's so kind. I was really, I mean, Christopher Nolan's my favorite director and I uh -huh. feel like what he does is push human consciousness forward. Uh -huh. like he's literally pushing the human thinking for like I think differently about space and and, and dreams because of him uh -huh. I really want to push emotion forward yeah like, as an artist I I want to like talk about because the sincerity about me is what is special I like and it's what I like about me and and then I want to be able to like just tap into these things I don't talk about often and get um, uh, to a different level of like emotional because I think that's ultimately what's going to make it better. 
Mm -hmm. And so I was really like just trying to think about like, man, what do I not like talking about? What do I not talk about? And, yeah. and what is, what's deep inside? What's scary if I published? If I published this, what would be scary? Vulnerable. About it? Yeah. The things yeah. that make you vulnerable and that, you know, people might be able to relate to you as this funny American comic you know, people in the, your community, they might be able to be like, oh, Sunny is such a funny American comic and we're both like millennials and we have this in common and this in common. But then you've come from a totally different background like them. You said there was only maybe one person in your school that you said was Sikh, right? When you were growing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like two year, two or three years younger than me, so. Yeah, so it's like, do you, are you friends with the person who's two or three years younger than you that's also having like a you know not the most warm experience in school or do you try to like form your own identity without hiding and being like well we got to stick together because none of them or do you try to prove um and I I found your when you were talking a little bit about growing up in your experience with racism and people being unkind to you um particularly your experience and I don't want to give a, lo a lot away about your special but when you're talking about you know people thought you were a girl going to the bathroom because your hair was so long. So you would go to the women's room a lot just to keep yourself safe. Like you were literally trying to keep yourself safe and how racism to you was so on the forefront. My experience was the opposite. I dealt with racism, but it was always behind the scenes because I'm biracial. So I look so white that I would hear people say really racist things thinking that oh, I'm in a room full of white people. And I just remember feeling like every time that happened, it feels like a very, like a gut punch. So, and it's very, and then I, I deal with the apology tour after, oh, well, I didn't mean it like that and blah, blah, blah. And you, you know what I mean? And it's just like that. And you have to deal with it in a way where you have to face the racism right front and center. Both yeah. are bad, but in both our comments on America and um, the way American particularly white American children are raised in the households they come up in, but it still stings. Well, I mean, and it's interesting because even though I was dealing with my own like racist uh, encounters, like it's mm -hmm. not like, like it's not like people didn't say other racist stuff in front yes, of yes, other people. Yes, 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 it, yes. It, so I, I, I get to have both of those experiences where, because I'm, I'm, cause I'm, I'm a, I'm a light skinned brown dude. Yeah. I mean, that, that, like even, um, for like Indian people will even tell me I'm like light skin, which sucks right. sometimes because I'm like I want to be darker. Like I've been going don't out in the all? sun. Don't we all? Don't we all? Yeah, it goes away. <laughs> it just goes away. So it fast. sure does. It sure does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like I, I yeah, I, and, and until I started talking about these stories with the people around me, I did not even understand how much of it I was just ignoring. I was just yeah. I was living in it and. When I started telling people like in New York, my experiences or people that I didn't grow up with, they couldn't believe what I was saying. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is yeah. not normal for everyone. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. And, and I think it's particularly detrimental to kids growing up hearing other children say racist things because you can't help but then have like a little bit of internalized hate for yourself. Like, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I'm not like everybody else and it and it can be a real struggle and then it becomes this later in life pattern of self-love and I have to work on loving myself because the environment of people I'm around I can't I might not be able to control that but I can control how I feel about myself regardless of how they whatever their racist biases are you know yeah because it, it really like sucks because the physically I just didn't represent uh, everybody that I was around so I didn't yeah. feel like them but mm -hmm. then when I was around people that did physically resemble who I was I didn't connect with them on the same level mm -hmm. all the time and so it just feels so disconnected where you just hate yourself because you're like why am I not more like the people I look like yeah so why am I more like the people I don't look like yeah, it's like you find this weird seesaw of not really being accept fully accepted by either side or any side, and you're just kind of like in this ping pong. I definitely uh, related to that really hard, even though it was on the other side of the spectrum. I definitely related to that really hard, and I'm glad that you were vulnerable and put that out in the forefront because I think sometimes it's not easy for people as adults 
who maybe were those kids who didn't even realize they were being bullied and didn't have control over what they were saying because of the adults in their life who said those things. I think it's good for them to hear those things. You know what I mean? Like even your example. And again, I don't, I do think everyone should go watch her special. So I don't want to give away a bunch of your jokes, but if I could just do the example of the hot dog and what was it? The hot dog or the fish and chips. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, like yeah, yeah. when you marginalize white people and you're like, uh, so what do you like? Hot dogs or fish and chips? I think I'm butchering the joke, but you just like boiled two groups of white people down to two foods. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I was really trying to because the joke originates from the 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 phrase "Are you red dot Indian or feather Indian?" Yes, it's like oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, uh, to give you a little background on that story, like that that uh, <laughs> the, I, I, in the joke, it's about like going through it in an elementary school. Yeah, but I the actual like experience itself in my life was I was in an AP US history class mm -hmm. and in the middle of class, like my my AP US history. So I'm in high school. Yeah. In the middle of class, he just randomly dropped like, are you red? Oh, yeah. Like, are you red dot or feather? Like as a joke, like, a, oh, I should have said that. Yeah, and then yeah, she yeah. explained what red dot or feather meant to the whole class. I'm sure that felt great. <laughs> I just I was like what's going on right what now what the fuck yeah <laughs> but uh so part of my comedy style my humor is I don't want to just go up on this stage and be like white people are pieces of shit am I yeah. right yeah of because course not. I want to connect as I, I don't like doing political jokes I don't yeah. like getting into pop culture that much uh -huh. I really just want to connect Connection. with as many people as possible in any given room yeah. And so the white people like fish and chips and hot dog, I think by turning it around yeah. for some people, they're going to be like, oh, but also it's like throwing another element of like, look, guys, there's different white people, too. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It's like you wouldn't want to be compared just because you look a certain way. Why are you the general you comparing people just because they might look a certain way or talk a certain way or dress a certain way? It's just you know, all these constructs people put on everything and it's just loosen the grip. Sometimes if you loosen the grip, it makes it um, easier to celebrate who we all are individually because we don't have to, just because other, uh, how do I want to word this? I, I think, you know, one of the things that makes humans special is our sense of tribalism, right? We we connect to certain people. We have we love traditions. Everybody all over the world loves those types of things, right? We like um, feeling safe with the people we trust. But if you're just constantly reminding, if you're constantly not aware of that and you're constantly shitting on other groups because they don't have your same values and traditionalism, you're never going to get anywhere. Just like stay in your lane, worry about yourself and be kind to people. And I think you really, really execute. You're going for human connection in your comedy. I think you really execute that well. And I just hope that you like keep doing that because people, you have a lot of great things to say and I think people need to hear them. No, thanks Rocky. I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but I remember, uh, in J somewhere between January and March 2020, I think it was when you first started working there. Uh, I was like one of your trainers, and mm -hmm. I wasn't training you on shit. I remember you I were the best like, trainer. Let's be real. I was, just like, <laughs> I, I, I was just like, so how's how, how long have you been doing improv and, and stuff like that, and just like picking your brain on comedy. And I remember we were like standing uh right in front of like table ten in that server station, and okay. we were just like talking about like some comedy goals, and uh, I, I think one thing that we both shared i think if i remember correctly i know you definitely said that you were going to write a pilot and i think you said you wanted to start a podcast yeah i think that was what it was and yeah. then i told you back i was like i think by the next year i would love to create and publish my own special yeah i remember your reaction was like so genuine at the time you were like that is amazing yeah. and it was just so supportive to hear so it's 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 so funny how we are now Time, at yeah. this point uh and and talking about it because this is the first podcast I've been able to talk about my show on. So really? it's like yeah, it's it's kind of funny how it's connected in that kind of way. Yes, yes. Um I do remember you talking about your one man show. I do remember you talking about that and I 
I loved working with you because, you know, it is nice to do. And even this show sometimes does get a little inside baseball. So I do appreciate people who are not um, fully invested in comedy and who are just listening to the conversations because that can be tough uh, with podcasts. You're like, I don't know what the hell they're talking about and getting really specific. So maybe they tune out. But for the people that don't, like I know it gets inside baseball, but this is definitely where my passion lies. And I know it's where your passion lies. And um, yeah, you just like, do you say to yourself now you do that special? Do you keep honing it? Do you do it a couple more times? Or do you say, okay, that's done on to the next yeah i mean it's it's hard like i've applied for a couple of fringe festivals i'm uh-huh. like talking to a friend and seeing if there's if i should extend it and try to get it somehow off broadway that's yeah. like kind of like some of the stuff i'm working on new material mm-hmm. and i can always just go back to that show but i think after this season of fringe festivals after edinburgh that yeah. i think if i can make it to edinburgh that's the final time i'll be like i'm done with this show yeah it's it's served its run and then i'm going to fully invest on making another solo show something even better and spectacular and 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 honestly if i just have more of a budget like this is what i'm doing with such a minimal budget and it's all reliant on my storytelling yeah, and I'm hoping that I will be able to do flashier shows because I'm a flashier person. Yeah, you're very stylish. You're very stylish. Thank you. I learned that from 2017 Bonnaroo. I didn't have that before. <laughs> that's where you found yourself. Now that's... you also, um, you said this is the first podcast where you're able to talk about your show, but you are working on a podcast yourself. Can you tell everybody about that? Yes, it's called Sounds Funny Radio. Mm -hmm. I am super, super excited to be involved in the project. Lots of great improvisers are on this project. Uh, James Quesada is the is like the the head honcho creator kind of guy, and it's uh, it's pretty much we are taking what we all love doing and performing and trying to translate it into an audio version, and we are doing a live show on wednesday december 21st 8 p.m at the pit lot amazing amazing and has that been fun you guys are rehearsing and stuff or you just kind of go in there and mess around it is fun it's actually a lot more structured than you would think because you know improv is so loose a part of the 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 difficulty at first was just translating it over because you can't play the exact same way Mm mm-hmm you have to be even more descriptive because we make eye contact as improvisers and on stage, I think it comes off a lot clearer to the audience and the performers because there's just so much nonverbal communication happening. I think that's part of the wa- the reason why improv doesn't translate video uh, always the best either. Yeah, unless it's like, top, sca- top notch, yeah. Exactly, like Middle Ditch and Schwartz. Yeah. And uh, I think even in audio, it was just even harder to like, just figure out how we communicate, how we establish. And and when you have like a headset and a mic on in front of you, it's, it's a completely different feeling. And it took us all some time to kind of really figure out the flow. But now we get in, we have a system. It's so efficient. It's, Mm -hmm. if we get the rhythm is down. I mean, every single time I go in there, it's like one of the best experiences I have. So it's, it's, it's going to be freaking fire emoji. It's uh really good. And Florence, if I'm not mistaken, is a part of the cast too, right? Yeah, Florence is a part of the cast. Florence has been on the show. Oh, yo, yeah. Yeah, nice. she's I, the best. I, I literally met Florence through Sounds Funny Radio. So. Yeah, she's great. So shout out to Florence. Shout out to James. Shout out to Sounds Funny Radio. Um, That's going to be amazing, Sunny. And where can everybody watch your special and follow you online? Yo, my name is Sunny Outlaw, exactly the way it sounds. S-U-N-N-Y-O-U-T-L-A-W. You can YouTube that and you'll find my special. It's called The Dream Come True. Instagram me, Sunny Outlaw. That you just Google it, stand up, comedian, whatever. You shall find me, my friend. You shall find Sunny. And I guarantee you, if you meet Sunny in person and you give him a warm hello, he will give you a warm hello right back. Yes, I will. I will give you a warm hello back, especially if you tell me that you watch my special. Yes, yes. Or heard you on Wild Nights. 
and then yes. the specials on the queue. I heard you on Wild Nights. My your specials on the queue, Sunny. Well, Sunny, this was such a pleasure as most interactions, all interactions with you are a pleasure. And um, I just really want to thank you for doing the show, Sonny. This was great. This was awesome. Thank you for helping me start this day off right. Oh my God. Same to you, Sonny. We will talk soon. Okay. Later. All right. Bye.